Okay, Mark, well, a lot of the questions now are based on the football pitch, which is rather uncommon. So let's get straight into it. Can we expect to see much activity in the January, January transfer window? Are there funds available? And is Kenny looking to strengthen? And I said to Kenny this morning, why would you want to tinker with that team too much? Yeah, I think there's a few questions in there. I mean, number one, a lot can happen in the next four to six weeks, or if you go to the end of the transfer window, 10 weeks, you can get some injuries, some suspensions. We could have players recalled to, to their parent club. So um, I think it's too early to say. All I can say is that we are prepared for all eventualities, a lot more prepared than, than I've known us for years and years and years. And we've sort of planning for the January window, the second the summer window shut. So we are very much prepared for that. Um, but how many players we need, will the squad need strengthening really is going to, is all, as always, down to the manager in regards of the budget and is, is there um, money in the budget for that. There's, there's always money in the budget for the right player at the right money. Obviously budgets, you start off your season, it's a guide of where you want to be and within reason you try and stick to it. However, as I've always said, if, if you've got a car and there's an, a part of the car that, um, you know, is, is malfunctions and to get to the end of your journey you need to get the part you can't say we've not got a budget for it you obviously have to make a budget so I hope I've answered the question there yes there is money if available but how busy we're going to be will be down solely to the manager and a lot of that I'm assuming will be dependent on parent club um, injuries suspensions you know how that might go is it a period of January that you enthuse about or do you just want to get it over with you just want to get it over with, really. But um, it's normally January you go into as a, as a period you can strengthen and improve, you know. And thank God for us this year, with, with, as we know, with top of the table, things are going quite well. So you, what, how you started off the question before the question was asked mm. is true. You know, you don't, you've got to be careful not to tinker too much with what is currently a, a winning formula. Now, jumping forward, but I suppose you've got to look at this. If we were to be promoted to the championship, would we realistically be able to compete? Would we have to speculate to accumulate in order to stay up? I'm um, not sure you'd have to speculate to, to accumulate as such, but Tony Brown, our Chief Operations Officer, the Board, Anna Mitchell, the Commercial Director, myself, we've already been working on the budgets for all eventualities for next season. Um, Michael as our chairman and the rest of the board are, are aware of those budgets, um, the sort of framework we're in and, and what that will give us. Because we've, we just work the same as we've always done. What's the money coming in? What's the money going out? Bar the players. Um, what's the difference? The difference is your player budget. Now, there's flexibility within that. Obviously, if, if Michael is chairman, if, if you've got a, for example, if you've got a player that, that maybe could be sold in the summer, I'm not saying there will be one, but just, you know, there's that possibility could be sold, any, any player. Um, then obviously there's a lot more money there and it gives us more flexibility. But within reason, we try and run, you know, a, a ship that, that um, operationally, P&L wise, you know, wipes its face, um, you know, operates at a break even. But Michael's been clear all the way along. It'd be, it would have been a long journey to get to the championship to, to give that up if, if for the sake of, X amount of money, you know, it gave us an even better fighting chance of staying up. So it's flexible. We'll present the budget. We'll sit down as always, discuss it with the board, discuss it with the manager, and we'll look at all eventualities and what will extra money here get us. What will, if we take money away from this area, what will that negative impact could that potentially have on us? So we'll explore all, all options. Just like January, you're prepared. Looking just, forward. Just like January, we are prepared and already looking forward. Yeah. Slightly different subject. Will the shirts the players wore with poppies on for remembrance be auctioned off? How and when will the club do this? Um, we donate the club shirts to the Royal British Legion. They have the mechanisms to auction them off and, and maximise revenue f for that particular cause. Um, apart from one shirt that we hold back, have it framed, auction it at the end of season, dinner, um, and then all proceeds from that go to the Royal British Legion as well. What are your thoughts on the fact Pompey versus Sunderland was overlooked for TV coverage in favour of Hull versus Swansea? And of course, domestically, we've had a great season, but we haven't featured on TV. Yeah, television. which is bizarre because previous seasons we've been on two, three times minimum. Um, but 
you know, this year, the powers that be at, the fo- at Sky haven't picked us for a TV pick, but we're, st- we're not even halfway through the season. So there's still, you know, the second half of the season. And I'm sure the way, if we keep going as we are, and there's some big games coming up, then we'll get a fair share of TV appearances. And I suppose less dis- disruption for fans. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing as well that, you know, f- from our point of view, obviously it's nice when a game is on TV, you get that TV windfall. But um, yeah, the, the downside of that is there is the disruption from fans from moving times and dates. And especially with a, a long trip like Sunderland, I'm assuming there's a lot of Sunderland fans that already booked their hotels, already booked their travel well in advance. Can you explain why in the last Q&A, you said you didn't think there's much difference between category two or three at academy level? Is it because you need more trainers per child and that would cost more money and you wouldn't be able to get it on by using volunteer coaches? Yeah, just um, to be clear on that, we don't use volunteer coaches anyway. All of our coaches are paid and professional, have required qualifications for each particularly, particular category that they are required. I think what I said last time was that in regards of the productivity, productivity output of players from Cat 3 to Cat 2, there isn't a great jump. The big jump comes when you get into to Cat 1 and you're competing against your Liverpool's, Manchester United, Man City, you know, all your you, you real big premiership clubs. Then there is obviously a big jump up. But the difference between Cat 3, Cat 2 isn't great, but it is great in the required amount of financial investment that has to be put in by the club. So as an example, facilities are a key point and you need an indoor facility of your own exclusively used by you or ex- used when you want it exclusively. So there, there's a lot of stipulations. Yes, there is more of a requirement for the coaching as well. In, in particular age groups, the requirements go up um, and different types of cro- coaches at different levels. So it's, it's a significant jump financially, but the product output isn't significantly great, in my opinion, to justify the expense of becoming cat two. However, by the time you get into, hopefully, the championship, not just us, any club gets into the championship, as a percentage that the money would take to go from cat three to cat two, it then becomes more of a viable proposition. But when you're in league one, the difference in going from cat three to cat two can have have quite a significant impact percentage wise on your player budget. Well answered. Right, a nice mixed package. Why do we still not offer players contract renewals? Have we not learnt our lesson from losing Ender Stevens? Jack Watmore and Gareth Evans, to name two, should 100% be offered new contracts. I think just the fact that you know we don't openly, publicly discuss player contracts, um, just the fact that because Jack hasn't signed or Gareth hasn't signed or... Um, Nathan hasn't signed, or whoever it might be, or, or let's use Ender at the time, doesn't mean that we are talking to them or not. So we tend to do our business behind closed doors. We don't want a public conference about our contract negotiations. And there's a lot of things to, to take into account as well, as I've said previously on this subject, that the year with Ender Stevens, as an example, we took the decision that midway through the season, we didn't know what league we was going to be in. We got promoted. Who's to say if we'd have agreed a new contract with Ender at X amount and you know the players talk to each other then there was I think there was Carl Bennett out of contract that year I can't remember there was four or five big hitting players out of contract you can cause disharmony in the changing room so we took a, a policy that you know whilst we would carry on talking with them we wouldn't officially you know get that out there to the public because that can cause disharmony because you don't want one player going, well, hold on, why is he talking to that player and not me? Am I surplus to requirements? And, you know, where do I stand? Then you don't want going into the last two, three months of the, of the, comp- of the league, you know, people may be pulling out of tackles, you know, thinking I'm up in three months, why am I busting a gut? Do, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's very similar to the promotion year in that we was in a great position that year in and around the playoffs as we are this year, obviously, and the autos are slightly higher. But what I'm saying is it's, it's very difficult to negotiate not knowing what league you're going to be in for the following year. For as an example, any of the players that you've mentioned there, um, again, behind closed doors, may be saying to me or maybe saying to Kenny, well, hold on, I think I should be in the championship. What happens if we don't get in the championship? What's my salary going to be in League One? Because I'm already, my agent's already told me that X, Y and Z club in the championship uh, are willing to offer X amount per week. So it's, it's not as easy as just offering 
a single individual player a contract and announcing it because that, that has significant knock-on effects to everyone else in the team. Yeah, we pride ourselves on being as open as any football club, but some things have to remain closed. That has to remain closed. I mean, we couldn't come out now as an example and say, oh, we're, we're talking to Jack Watmore or we're talking to X player or Y player, Y player, because that just wouldn't be correct. You know, contract negotiations should remain private and confidential until the day that they're actually signed and we can go public with them. Changing tack again. When will the Chimes executive seating be brought up to the same standard as the Montgomery executive seating? The Montgomery seats have slight padding on them. Chimes have none, just hard seats. Hardly seems fair. Yeah, I mean, the, the Chimes area as such, next to the director's box, you know, we try, well, I think we get everyone from the Chimes lounge up the stairs into that particular area. Montgomery corporate clients, it's a little bit sporadic, um, but there are quite a few of them we've managed now to get into the hanging baskets, which, you know, do have the padded seats. But there is a review ongoing at the moment um, in regards of all the seating and, and the type of seating in specific areas and trying to get different lounges grouped more together. OK. I was wondering what the position is with our new Croatian keeper, Peter Duren. To the best of my knowledge, he hasn't played for us yet, not even for the academy team. And I wondered why this was. Is he injured? Yes, he's injured, um, but that's quite a recent injury. Um, as he was under 18, the rules and regulations um, for cross-border transfers are very strict. There was, we had to deal with Atlanta and his previous host club that, you know, he was in their academy early on, he's in their, their um, school of excellence, whatever it might be in that particular country. So there was a lot of hurdles to get over to get the international clearance. He did get the international clearance a few weeks ago and then, um, you know, unlucky for us and for him, he picked up a slight quad injury and the latest time I'm being told that he is available for selection is two to three weeks away. Okay. So there's a nice mixed package this yeah, week. Really good. Um, yeah. I said to you at the end of the last one, still top of the league. Yeah. I'm saying the same to you at the end of this one. Yeah, um, and I keep saying the same. I know they're old cliches, but it is one game at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. Keep our heads down. Um, we are in a, obviously, a fantastic position. Our points return to date's great. We're still in the FA Cup, still in the checker trade. And, you know, if that bad dip of form, which happens at most clubs, let's be fair, even in clubs that win championships, you know, they do have a dip of form. It's important that we stay solidly together, keep, keep back in the team, keep back in Kenny and keep back, back in each other. And listen, you know, you know what I think about Pompey fans, I'm sure that will be the case. But is there this element in you of this inner belief the longer it goes on? Um, I must admit on um, Tuesday night against Walsall, I'm the most nervous watcher of a football game involving oh, Pompey. Yeah. By you, yeah. I mean, you know what, I'm, you sit next to me at some games, yeah. Um, but I did sort of sit there and was quite relaxed at kick-off against Walsall because I think that, you know, winning becomes a habit. Confidence is key. Momentum is key. And we seem to be ticking a lot of those boxes at the moment. So, as I say, that where people say you know, our pressure of being top of the league or pressure being in the automatic promotion places. I, I don't see that as a pressure. You know, if you're at the bottom of the table fighting for your lives every game, that's real pressure. Then we could just got to relax, enjoy it. And as I say, just take one game at a come, one game at a time. I'm sure there will be obstacles along the way. There always is. We'll suffer injuries. We will suffer suspensions. We will suffer potentially, you know, clubs recalling key pads. That's, that's just the nature of football. But it's the clubs that are prepared, the clubs that work Hard, worked hard and more importantly clubs that stick together during them tough times that get over the line and, and that's what we'll keep working at. Well said and thank you once more for your contribution. All right thank you very much. Cheers Johnny.